What's up guys? So about a week ago, uh, on the suggestion of one of my viewers, I put out a video asking you guys to send in your own film photographs. And then there were no real criteria. I just wanted, you know, five photos taken on any type of film camera. I was hoping I'd get enough to make an entire video and I was totally blown away. Uh, I got, in fact, so many submissions that this is gonna have to be a multi-video thing. I, I went to a couple of people and asked, like, should I leave some out? How should I do it? You know, should I, how should I structure this? And, and basically the suggestions I got, what I'm gonna do is, I'm just gonna show them chronologically. I'm gonna show everything I got, <laughs> every photo that I received, go through them, do a little bit of commentary on them. I'm not gonna say whether they're good or not. Uh, most of them were really great and I'm, I'm not here to critique photos so much as to just kind of go through and, and, uh, and show off my viewers' work. And I learned a couple of things. I learned three things primarily from the submissions I got. Uh, number one, you guys are super talented. Like, and I, I, it sounds like I'm just kissing your ass, but I'm not. Um, I was amazed at the quality of photos I got. Absolutely amazed. I was uh, blown away by the quality of work you guys are doing. You know, people say things are humbling, and if you're someone like me, the tendency is to kind of roll your eyes at an expression like that, but I was legitimately humbled by the work I got. Really, really impressed. Uh, yeah, so thank you. Uh, thank you first and foremost. You guys are really awesome and really talented. Two, the second thing I realized is you guys are all over the world, which is so wild to me. I kind of knew that, but seeing the photos I got, you know, I got photos from Kuala Lumpur, I got photos from London, I got photos from Paris, I got photos from this uh, country I've never heard of, it sounds pretty exotic, it's Canada, I think it was called, uh, and then from all over the US, you know, LA, uh, Florida, upstate New York, wherever that is, you know, <laughs> so places like that. So it was really cool, really great. And that's 2016 kind of in a nutshell, I think even a decade ago, you know, I'm old enough to remember a time when it would not have been possible to, uh, to have input from people in so many different places and it's really great. So thank you guys for that. Uh, the third thing I realized, not so great, you guys are all dudes. There are apparently no women who watch my channel you know, it just reinforces what I already knew. It's not good for my self-esteem, but you know, what can you do? <laughs> so yeah, uh, yeah, uh, talented, uh, international, male. <laughs> so yeah, so without further ado, uh, let's look at some photos. So we'll be drinking, uh, drinking a couple of beers here as we go through these. Uh, so the first photos I got that night were from uh, a guy named Elias Willems. Uh, 29 years old, Belgian, and living in Thailand, like I was saying. So let's let's get into these. Let's take a look. Let's see what he's got for us. Um, so these photos were all taken on uh, an Olympus 35mm uh, camera with a 50mm 1.4 and a 28mm 2.8. Uh, most of the film he uses is Ilford XP2, which I've actually never used. Uh, but you can see right away what black and white film brings to the table. The dynamic range is awesome. Um, I love that this looks, you know, it almost looks overexposed, but on film, you know, in a digital image, the, the overexposed sections would just click over to white pixels and they'd just be blown out. In film, it retains this kind of uh, creaminess, uh, you know, and, and uh, dynamic range. That's re it's really beautiful. It, it just kind of glows, you know, it has this tonality that you don't get out of digital. Uh, for the most part, you know, I'm not trying to make it film versus digital, but it just looks cool. You also get that beautiful grain. Uh, same thing here. This one looks like obviously it was taken in, in lower light. Uh, you know, a lovely girl, of course, never hurts any photo. Uh, the bokeh looks really beautiful. Um, the grain is, is gorgeous. Yeah, really nice. Same thing here, the autofocus portion. This is, uh, you said that you do street and um, street and lifestyle photography. And this photo particularly to me, uh, it really just kind of, it's got a lot going for it in terms of uh, the character of the subject. It's, it really feels alive, it really feels interesting. And uh, yeah, really, really beautiful. Uh, this one here, she looks unhappy. I like the balance of the image. Actually, everyone in there looks unhappy. Uh, yeah, yeah, really neat. I've, you know, I've taken the subway maybe three times in my life. Here's a, a young lady wearing some creepy glasses <laughs> and an Iron Maiden t-shirt. Uh, yeah, a lot going on here. You got a cigarette, you got an Iron Maiden shirt. I've heard, I only, I think I know one Iron Maiden song. Is that Run to the Hills? Is that, that's Iron Maiden, right? Uh, 
<laughs> Pretty sure it is. I think so. And these creepy mad scientist goggles. I don't I don't have a lot to add on that one. <laughs> and then last, uh, again, lovely girl. Um, same thing with those highlights. You know, I, it looks like a Gucci store behind her, which is interesting. But you've got those really kind of glowing... Uh, illuminated highlights that are just kind of kind of beautiful and stand out and the the smooth um, uh, noise you know film noise looks good film grain rather looks good uh, digital noise looks ugly and I think that's a huge distinction to make so thank you so much Elias you were the first one I, I think I sent you back an email right away saying like done you're included for sure uh, I really appreciated you you reaching out makes a makes all the world of difference to me so thank you very much man the second set of photographs i got were from joshua hurley from sydney australia australia is somewhere i have always wanted to go i've, I've always wanted to go when actually when i was in my early 20s uh one of the reps at a store i worked i worked in a sales job and one of the reps there had lived in Australia or was from Australia or something and he told me I should just go spend a year there picking fruit and working as like a migrant worker and it sounded pretty appealing and then I went to college instead so uh, I always kind of regret not going and living as a vagrant in Australia for a year um, and, and learning to surf that's all I wanted to do so he included four images and let's take a look so the first two here uh, are on Delta 400 pushed to 3200. Uh, he used these images in an experimental university project. So let's take a look. Uh, I like it. I think it looks really good. Actually, it looks better than you'd imagine. I'm sure there's a ton of grain and you can actually see in the shadows the amount of grain. And correct me if I'm wrong, it almost looks like it was even less exposed in the actual negative and then you, you bumped up the the uh the brightness in in the scan i might be wrong i could be wrong but yeah looks cool i like the balance i like the mood of the photo it's got kind of a weird kind of noir uh really contrasty look which is interesting uh this one i'm not entirely certain what i'm <laughs> looking at i imagine it's a it's a reflection of some kind here but really cool you see a building um yeah leave a comment tell me what this is what is this reflection in so the color image was taken on Portra 400, taken while walking around Sydney. I like this one quite a bit, actually. When I, when I looked at your photos initially, when I got them on my phone and, and looked at them, this is the one that caught my eye. I just think it's really cool. I like the use of negative space. I love the, uh, the patterns in the buildings. Uh, yeah, it's cool, the reflection in that building of a separate building. Really, really neat. Um, got almost kind of like a Brazil, <laughs> you know, kind of uh, dystopian paradise uh, thing going on here. I like it. It's neat. The color's cool. This might even I almost work better in black and white um, or work as well. I, I kind of like the, the blue and the green there, but I think in black and white, if you had that tonality, it could be very, very cool. And then the last one you say here uh, was taken from a body of work I produced for the university called Through the Eye of the Judge. In this, I looked at the way people perceive others and judge based on what they see. Uh, this is why I only see through cracks of images are shot through holes and cracks and fences and doors in a struggling suburb of Sydney. I'm currently working on turning this into a small book, which is really cool. So I'm going to, uh, if you want to reach out, Joshua, because I don't think you did here, if you want to reach out and give me like a link to any website you have or any, uh, any sort of like, um, portfolio page be happy to link to it and I'll add it to the show notes here I, I don't see anything here but uh, yeah really really cool one thing that's interesting to me I, I like this photo quite a bit too this is interesting and I like the, the the concept I like your shadow in the foreground I think it's cool one thing that I find really interesting is in Europe and in countries that are not the United States or Canada which I made fun of earlier but I am well acquainted with Canada uh, in general in a lot of other countries I guess suburbs are the the poorer, more dangerous areas. In the United States, suburbs are, are generally uh, wealthier and um, wealthier and safer, uh, more boring. Uh, it's just kind of an interesting dichotomy, I think. It's, uh, it's strange, maybe, how things kind of worked in, in reverse. Um, yeah, uh, I wanted to shoot film in particular, uh, the look it has, and I love the whole feeling. The dials, the shutter, Absolutely. There's a tactile kind of involvement with shooting film that you don't get 
from shooting digital. And again, I, I'm not trying to denigrate digital. I'm not trying to you know talk in absolutes or black and white. But I think that when you shoot with film, you know, uh, generally if you're doing it as a hobby or you're doing it for artistic purposes, not as a job, I wouldn't ask a sports illustrated photographer to go out and shoot on film. That would be stupid. Uh, but if you're shooting for your own enjoyment, the physical aspect, the fact that you, you put that film in the camera and then you take the photo and then you take that film out and you develop it and then that physical object is with you through the entire process. It's incredibly satisfying in a way that's really difficult to quantify, really difficult to describe. Um, but if you're into it, you're into it. I think that people who listen to vinyl might understand, you know? Does it sound better? I guess some people say it does. Is that really the point? You know, questionable. <laughs> you know, the point is the process. You know, I, I think I quoted Camus. It's one of my favorite quotes ever, but you know, he said, the struggle towards the heights alone suffices to fill a man's heart. And he said it in French. <laughs> but, uh, you know, imagine Sisyphus happy, right? It's, uh, it's the actual physicality of it. It's, it's the difficulty. It's the, uh, the ownership over the photos that you, that you have uh, that's satisfying and, and that's fun. And I think, honestly, that the photos I got from you guys are of much higher caliber than if I were running just a normal photography site. And I said, send me your, you know, your Canon photos or your Nikon photos. You know, show me your digital images. I, I bet I'd get a lot of garbage and I got no garbage. <laughs> so I, I think that that mastery and that, that involvement that you have to have to a certain extent to shoot film results in just better photographers. Uh, you know, with some exceptions, of course, but yeah. Uh, so the third set of photos that I'm going to go through today, uh, a guy named Colin Stewart, his icon on Gmail is like a, an eagle, a cartoon eagle, that's something. Uh, he said he's gotten into film photography after being inspired by multiple people on YouTube, as well as having a nostalgic feeling after seeing some photos of himself from his own childhood. I can totally identify with that. Uh, I went through and scanned a bunch of old photos of myself, and I, I'm not trying to brag, but I was probably the cutest kid ever. <laughs> but, you know, those photos taken on film, taken by my dad, they look great. And they look great in a way that your cell phone photos don't, no disrespect. He says, I've shot digital since uh, 2008, 2009, started with a D800, you later moved to a D810, which is serious business. Uh, did a little bit of black and white film photography in high school and developing long ago. Hey, me too, man. Uh, the school provided either a Canon AE1 or a Pentax K1000, I forget which. Absolutely. So he's got a link here to uh, his film first photos and I'm going to go through them. Uh, so the first one here taken on Ultramax 400, 50 millimeter 1.8, uh, natural light and an LCD or LED, what am I even saying? LED ceiling light. LCD wouldn't really make any sense. Uh, and you can see even on like a 50 millimeter uh, camera, these are taken with, uh, what did he say here? Uh, this is Ultramax 400. It's like drugstore photography. And you can see uh, the, the drop off in sharpness on what is essentially a very affordable lens, very affordable camera. You can get a look that people will recognize instantly as, you know, better gear. People see that, that fall off in focus and they say like, oh, what kind of camera did you use? How did you, how did you get that? And you can get a, you know, a whole setup that'll do this for well under $100. Uh, second one, portrait of my dad outside uh, Gold 200. Again, you know, just, uh, you know, mass market film, uh, drugstore film. I've used Gold before. It looks great. 50 millimeter 1.8, just like the last one. Or <laughs> I guess he forgot. It's either <laughs> the 1.8 or the 35 1.8. Either way, you get the idea. It looks like there was some sort of grilling going on here, and I wholeheartedly approve of that. And then last, so this one, so I do have a, a little bit of a like qualms with this photo. So this one taken on uh, Agfa Vista Plus 400. Uh, <laughs> I didn't want them to. I'm not sure if the weird hue of the film is due to this film sucks. I shot it cold still. It was at night and only relied on warm temperature. I would guarantee it's, it, it doesn't, I would say it probably has nothing to do with the temperature of the film. It almost certainly has to do with the film you used and uh, the lighting, because it was at night, and that's going to give everything kind of that yellowish light. It's just the, the tone of the, the lights you're using. N not much that can be done about that. My real problem with this photograph, it's cool, and I love, again, you shot, it looks like you shot it wide open, backgrounds, uh, you know, dropped off in focus, you got that nice smooth bokeh there. My problem, why are you drinking PBR? Like, what, what are you doing with your life? You need to, to reevaluate your, your priorities here and, and upgrade. 
Um, even if you're going cheap, man, like get some High Life, I think is a good beer. Uh, if, you're, if you're anywhere near me, Jenny Cream Ale is delicious. Uh, you know, blue, blue light. Don't, don't be drinking PBR. But <laughs> either way, just kidding. Thank you, Colin. I really appreciate you sending photos in. I'm not trying to, to, to badmouth your beer choices. I mean, only I am a little bit. <laughs> So the next set of photos came from Christian Bailey. So Christian is 21 years old. Uh, that hurts my feelings every time I read something like that. <laughs> from Huntsville, Alabama. I've never been to Alabama. I've actually never been to the American South. Uh, am I miss uh, Christian, comment. Am I missing anything in Alabama? Should I go down there? Uh, <laughs> I've never... I, I've stopped at, like, the airport in uh, South Carolina a couple of times when I was flying to, to Phoenix, but I've never actually been there. Um... Uh, I shot this in Fairhope, Alabama. It depicts a boy fishing on a pier at sunset. Uh, when I started photography two years ago, I was a first-time college student with little money, desired to catalog the things I was doing with my friends and peers. Uh, I decided that shooting film would save me money and set me apart from other photographers in the area. That's a hugely important part. Maybe not so much the money, because I spend a lot of money on film stuff, but setting yourself apart. You know, what? film is so, or uh, rather photography is so ubiquitous in modern culture. It's so, you know, we're so saturated with photographs. You know, you go on Facebook, you go on Instagram, you go on Snapchat, you know, Flickr, whatever. We're just inundated with photos. And it's like, what can you do to make your photos interesting, to, to show that you put love and work and, and effort into them? And I think film is a really good way to kind of set that apart. I've, I've really strongly considered getting into wet plate because it's such a unique look and it's such a unique, difficult art form. Uh, if you guys know how to do wet plate, if you know where I can learn it, leave a comment. <laughs> I would be interested. I don't want to poison myself with potassium cyanide. Uh, outside of that, I'm open to the idea totally. But uh, yeah, it's, it, it definitely is unique in, in 2016 to shoot film. Not as unique. I, I got so many submissions, it, it, it gives me hope. But uh, yeah, so this photo, uh, you said you took on a medium format. It's a Bronica ETRS, which, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, that's a square format, 6x6. Six six. Looks like it. Uh, I actually considered buying a Bronica when I bought my RB and decided that I wanted the bigger negative and the, the Mamiya glass. Uh, this is a, would you say, an eight second exposure at f11. So actually, in terms of like medium format, a, a pretty narrow, or a pretty open aperture rather, uh, 75 millimeters, so a, a wide normal lens, uh, f2.8. I'm amazed, I, I love, for starters, I love the, uh, I love the movement of the water. I love the mood. I love the dynamic range. It's it's really gorgeous. I I like the uh, the silhouetted little boy in the back there. Um, you said you were not the biggest fan of Acros. Uh, I actually have shot Acros, and I didn't have super good results with it either. Shot some in, when I was in Arizona. When I was in Sedona, I took some photos with it, and didn't have super super good results. But this is really a lovely photo, uh, and I'm amazed that that little boy stayed still for eight seconds because he's pretty sharp actually, and the water is is not. But really solid work, dude. Um, thank you for sending this in. It's, it's, a, it's a lovely image. Um, I'm going to link you negative slide effects. I will link to Christian's uh, website uh, on the bottom here in the show notes. Thanks again, man. Next up, Scott Allen. Uh, Eric, my name's Scott. I've been shooting since 1996. Uh, he's got a degree in photography, which is pretty cool. Uh, he lives in Dallas, Texas. I've been to Texas I think I've been to the state of Texas three times in my life. Um, all three times involved landing in an airport and then eventually leaving. Uh, I think Dallas twice and Austin once. I've never actually spent any time in, uh, in Texas. I'd like to spend some time in Austin, actually. Uh, and I sort of like the Houston Rockets. <laughs> I don't know why. I just kind of like that basketball team. I always have. Anyway. Uh, thank you for sending these in. And you said uh, you, said you were shooting uh, digital. You got burned out on photography, uh, sold all your gear, uh, let your studio go. Uh, about six months later, you got the itch to start shooting again, and you had a Bronica ETRS that your dad had given you and a Canon Elan 70 that you used in high school. Uh, actually, pretty good cameras. Uh, the Bronica, of course, that's the last, uh, the last photo we got from Christian there, used the Bronica ETRS. I uh, started shooting film again and fell in love with photography all over again. You know, awesome, man. That's great. It's the best. And these Bronica photos, for the most part, or at least these first two, are taken on the 75mm f2.8. Uh, you know, so far we're batting 100 with that, with that lens. This first image, uh, Ballet Shoes, what, what film do you use? Portra 400. 
really beautiful, really lovely. I love the leading lines. Um, the color is nice. You know, this photo could be taken in black and white, and I think it would it would be gorgeous as well. But the square format's really interesting. The the um, balance in the image, the way it's set up, the narrow depth of field. It's a really, really lovely image, and uh, I'm really impressed with it. You should be proud of this. <laughs> uh, this one here, Bronica ETRS, uh, Zenzanon 75mm, 2.8, and uh, Ilford HP5, which I, I think I've, I've never shot. I'm, n I'm not certain. Again, it's cool. I like the movement. Um, I, like that the, I honestly like that there's a little bit of blur in her leg. Uh, that kind of shows the movement there, shows, you know, uh, some sort of action. It's cool. I like it. Um, it's not a big enough image for me to really see the grain in it. Can I zoom in here? No. I would like to, to take a look at what the grain looks like on HP5. It actually looks like it's pretty fine. Uh, certainly finer than something like Tri-X. Now, Caitlin Stacy shot using the Bronica Zenzen on 150 3.5, so, you know, a telephoto lens. This is a cool image. Uh, I like her... <laughs> denim sleeveless shirt. <laughs> you got kind of like a rockabilly look going here. It's sort of a pinup rockabilly style with the hair and the the uh, the makeup. Obviously a lovely lady. Uh, really cool. Really like it. The black and white looks great. And you use the, uh, what did you say you used here? Ilf same Ilford HP5 film. Very cool. And then two shots of Mindy using the Bronica 150 3.5. First one here, this is done in Ektar. You know, and we all know that people don't like that I don't love Ektar generally. Here it looks great. Um, you can see the cyan for sure. Uh, you can see that kind of like poster art look that Ektar gives. Uh, the tattoo on her arm looks really, really cool. Her eyes look really cool. The color I think does help this image. It gives it some punch. Um, the out of focus areas look beautiful. It's a good image. It's definitely really, really cool. Um, the green of the uh, the car she's in there. I, I can only imagine what type of vehicle. And then last, uh, this is Mindy again. Uh, this one here you said is on Ilford FP4, 125. Never used it. Uh, probably the same spot that that earlier ballet photo was taken from, I'd imagine. Uh, really cool. Really neat. Looks great. Uh, really good work, man. Thank you, Scott. Um, he's got... He said he actually, when he sends his film out to be developed, he sends it to thedarkroom.com, which is, uh, I've never used them, but that's cool. He developed some using his own caffeinol method. Uh, these were all sent to the dark room. I've never used caffeinol. Um, I do like the idea of it, but I do also want, like, I, I really want all my photos to turn out when I take them, and I don't really want to experiment. Uh, I might shoot, like, a, just a waste, you know, a burner roll and then experiment with it, but I generally wouldn't, wouldn't do that with something I care about. Uh, and then he links to his Facebook page. I will link that on the bottom. Thanks so much, Scott. I really appreciate it. Last for today, if you're not mentioned yet, if I haven't shared your photos, just bear with me. You will be, you will be shared here. But last, this, this one, this is, this one really hurt my feelings, actually. <laughs> this is, this is from Patrick Williams. Uh, I don't know if he said where he lives, uh, but Patrick is 20 years old and he started shooting film when he was 15. Uh, it looks like he uses uh, both a, a Nikon F3 and a Leica M4, so we're not messing around here. And uh, his photos are just really lovely. Oh, New Jersey. I have family in Rockaway. Do you live anywhere near there? Probably not. It's up by the city. But yeah, um, he said, for example, the, uh, he likes how much stronger it can be as a creative outlet. Uh, for example, you have uh, all the different lenses, bodies, film stocks, uh, expired and fresh, film sizes, and even developing and scanning processes at relatively affordable prices. L legitimately true. You can try all sorts of different gear. You can try all sorts of different film. And you have so many different outlets to experiment and see the different looks and see the different different, uh, different images you get out of stuff. And it's, it's really exciting and really fun. And it's fun to collect this stuff and you can do it for you know hundreds of dollars rather than tens of thousands. So I'm absolutely with you, Patrick. Um, and uh, forces you to be at your best and worry about your current self and surroundings since there isn't a screen to always be looking at for errors, 100%. Uh, I will link to his Instagram, which is what he shared on the bottom here. So the first photo, gorgeous dude, just beautiful here. You used uh, Kodak Ultramax, again, drugstore film. Uh, the dynamic range is, is beautiful. Obviously, you caught some really great light. Uh, it's just a really interesting photo. The movement, the light, the colors. Really, really stunning, really beautiful. Now, you took this on a, a Nikonos V. 
Nikonos 5, I suppose. Uh, now, correct me if I'm wrong, is that an underwater camera? I feel like that's an underwater camera, but I, I might be wrong, a waterproof camera. Uh, let me know in the comments. Uh, second one, frog. Okay, so for starters, I like frogs. <laughs> just, I like little like creatures, just no matter what. Uh, but yeah, it's, uh, the colors again, you got that warmth to the colors, you have that beautiful fall off from the sharp to the out of focus areas. Uh, the frog is adorable. He's bright and, and, uh, and great looking. Uh, yeah, it's really great. And you took this one with the Nikon F3, uh, 50 millimeter F.2, or F2 rather, and Ultramax, all super affordable stuff. Now this photo is, I, I would say stunning. This is, a, this is my favorite one that you sent me. Uh, and it's not to say the others aren't great, but this is, is really lovely. Uh, the way it's divided almost equally into thirds here. Um, the way you can't see the person's face is incredible. Uh, the dynamic range, the snow, it could be very, very difficult to take good photos in the snow just because everything tends to get blown out. It is great. This is a really stunning image. I really, really, really love it. Uh, you should be super proud of this. It's, it's really solid work. And you took that on Triax, which is my favorite. Same camera, same lens as the last one. Uh, this one, a Leica M4. So we're, we're, we're up in our game here. We're getting a little bougie with the, uh, the 35 millimeter game here. Uh, Voigtlander 35 millimeter F1.2. So we're, we're, we're moving into the realm of not affordability here, but still. Uh, Portra 160, it's got that, you know, desaturated 160 Portra look. It's beautiful. The depth of field is beautiful. It's great. It looks like a fashion shoot photo. It's, it's really, really incredible. Um, really solid work. And then the last one, same uh, camera, same lens. Uh, Agfa Vista 200. Really nice. Really, you know, evocative. So, Patrick, super good work, man. Set up a website. <laughs> Set up a website, start making prints, sell your prints, people will buy them. You're doing great work, man. So, uh, yeah, that's, that's what I got for you guys today. Um, I'm going to keep making these. I'm going to keep doing these. I got well over, you know, I, don't, I got hundreds of photographs, tons of photographs. And uh, I don't want to leave anyone out because they're all really, really good, really, really great work. So, uh, this will be a, a thing that continues and keep sending them in. I had some people be like, am I too late? You're not too late. Send me photos. Send, okay. So just don't put them in a zip file. <laughs> a couple of people did that. Like, don't do that. I like Not that I don't trust you, but I'm not opening any, you know, zip files. I'm sorry. Uh, attach them to the, to the message itself. Don't go more than five. I had some people send like six and be like, oh, I'm so sorry. It's fine. You know, <laughs> if you think you got six really great photos, if you think you have eight really great photos, send me eight photos. That's fine. Um, try to keep the file sizes relatively small. Again, none of this is, is set in stone, but, um, but keep sending them. Uh, as long as it's on film, I would love to see some large format stuff. I know I have one subscriber in particular who comments on some of my videos and recently commented on an Instagram post who does really beautiful large format work. Send me some photos, dude. You know who you are. <laughs> I'll put a bit of video for sure. So uh, we're going chronologically. We're going forward. I just recently took a trip up up north and uh, shot a bunch of film. And I dropped it off today. I shot four large format exposures. We'll see how those turn out. There's some some question about how those are going to look. But I, I did. I shot four large format exposures. I shot a ton of film. I think three rolls of black and white film. We'll see what it looks like. I'm hoping it's cool. Uh, I'll address that stuff in a future video. Um, I did, I don't know if you, if you guys follow me on Instagram, I did buy, uh, at least start to assemble a Pentax 6.7. I got the, the 105 2.4. I'm, I'm kind of hunting for a body in good shape uh, for a decent price. And then I'm going to get a prism and then, then we'll, we'll go take some photos with that, that bad boy. Uh, beyond that, you know, I'm going to do some large format content shortly. Uh, like I said, I shot four, four sheets of LVO 100 and I want to do some more soon. So plenty going on, plenty, plenty happening. Uh, fall is coming. So the leaves are going to change and it should be gorgeous in, you know, in the Adirondacks and in the Catskills. So I'm hoping to go do some, uh, do some waterfall photography and, and landscapes in with the, uh, with the reds and the yellows and the oranges. So yeah, bear with me guys. Uh, as always, if you're interested in like what I'm doing, updates, things like that, uh, follow me on Twitter, which I, you know, is, I'll link on the bottom. I'm trying to be more diligent in that, but if you follow me, I'll put updates on, on what I'm working on. Um, but yeah, thanks so much. You guys are the best. Keep sending me photos. I'll do another update with some more probably within a week. See you later, guys. Be safe.